Well, hello, good people. Today, I wanted to walk you through some setup options for Swarm UI. If you haven't seen the previous video on how to install it, I'll leave a link in the description below and attach it to an end screen. Now, a quick note, this isn't necessarily a beginner video. If you're a beginner, I do encourage you to watch the video, but this video is geared towards the intermediate to advanced user that uses Comfy UI and they're quite familiar with it or even platforms like Automatic 1111, Focus, so on and so forth. Now in the previous video, I showed you where to put your models, your control nets and all that stuff. But if you're an Automatic 1111 user, for example, and you want to point to your Automatic 1111 folders, the way you can do that is head into server at the top here, select server configuration. And under these fields here is where you want to copy and paste your paths to like your models folders or your LoRa's are, the VAEs, so on and so forth, right? Or your model root, mine would be my D drive backslash SD models. Now for you, this could be very different. It could just be C drive slash automatic 1111 or whatever your folder is called. And then under SD model folders where your actual models are, in my case, it's checkpoints. So you see the address there. For the rest of your files, you want to do the same thing. This is where you would see in my particular folder address, it's under automatic 1111. The same for my VAEs, control nets, and my other files. So you would just simply copy and paste those addresses into those fields. The other place you might want to do this is your output path. If you have one folder where all your output goes, you can paste that in there. Typically, I like to keep mine within the platform, so I just leave it at output. Now, once you've done that, you'll see this button to click save. And then we're going to head back to the generate tab here. And if we open up our models area here, we just need to click on refresh and you see now our models have been loaded. We can do the same thing if our VAEs or LoRa's haven't populated yet. So we'll click on that for my LoRa's. And by the way, you could rearrange how this looks. We can do small cards. We can change the depth from three to five if we wanted to. And we can change them to thumbnails, small thumbnails. We can sort by name, reverse. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I thought I'd point that out to you guys just in case. Also encourage you to do the same for your control nets. Simply refresh it and you should see it there. But speaking of control nets, now that you have your models in place, we're going to close this off by clicking on the arrow and then we're going to head over to the left here and enable control net. Now you do have the option to use up to three control nets. I don't know why they're not together. <laughs> Hopefully they'll fix that in an update. But if you click on control net here, you now see that you can input some information for using control nets. But before you do that, we need to load the preprocessors, right? If we go to the drop down here, you see there's only canny because I installed it just to experiment. But whatever the case, we can click on here. You're going to get this option only the first time you use control net to install control net preprocessors. We'll go ahead and click that, you're going to get this notice and simply click on OK. Now it's going to be installing the preprocessor. Now once it's done, if we click on the preprocessor drop down. We see all of these preprocessors ready to use. If we click on the control net model, you see that it says none. This is where you can go into your control nets here and pick, let's say we're going to use the new union model. If you're unfamiliar with the union model, basically it does all the control nets. You don't have to download all these models. One model will cover all. I'll do a separate video on that, but I'll leave a link in the description below where you can download it. I basically just renamed it Union SDXL. Let's close this up and you see now it's populated. So let's say I'm going to use a Midas depth preprocessor here with the Union SDXL control net. By the way, Union is for SDXL. I've got a prompt in here already and I'm just going to choose an image to use as the reference and let's see my settings for the model i'm selecting realism engine and let's generate and we're getting this error oh <laughs> before you do anything shut down and restart so i'm going to restart swarm here 
duh. Yeah, usually when you make major changes like adding control nets, adding models, typically if you reset things, it should be fine. But sometimes it's better just to shut down and restart. So it should have saved all my settings here. Let's put in that image again and let's select Midas. We've got our model selected. Let's hit generate. There we go. Now it looks like it's generating. So here's the image using the Midas control net just with the depth map. And uh, yeah, the results look really good. It's a really simple prompt. But once again, I'll dive deeper into the specific control net in another video. But that's pretty much how to set up your models and your control nets with Swarm UI. Now, the great thing about this is, let's say I like this workflow using just this one control net, but I want to tweak it or change it in some way. Well, we can go into the comfy workflow here and just ignore that error. That's the default one. But what we can do is you see here, it says import from generate tab. If we like that workflow, I can click on that and it's going to import this Pacific control net workflow into the workspace here. There it is. So if I zoom in here, you see that we have our text encoders, our positive and negative, our checkpoint loaders, our latent image, the typical stuff. We have already now the workflow using the control net. Now we have the Midas depth map node here, the load control net model here. We'd have to swap this out to load the image because it just comes out in gibberish here, <laughs> but it gives you the basis for the workflow. So we have our apply control net advanced here, our swarm K sample, VE. So it really set up your workflow for you. Now, the other cool thing we can do is the reverse. Start with a workflow and save it as a template. So I'm going to clear this workflow here and I'm going to put in a similar control net workflow and you see that it's missing some stuff. So what's happening here is that we have an undefined node here, and that's because number one, we don't have the Comfy UI manager and we need to install the correct node. So we're gonna shut down Swarm, restart it after we install the Comfy UI manager. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with it already installed. I hope in a future update they do that. But anyway, you can scroll down to the area where it shows you the installation. But first, what we wanna do is copy this area here. So we're going to click Control C to copy and then go to Comfy UI custom notes. Now for Swarm, obviously it's going to be a little bit different. So you want to find your main Swarm UI folder, which is here. In my case, it's my D drive. We're going to open that up and then under DL backend is where you'll find Comfy UI's folder. So click on Comfy. Click on Comfy UI, and then you want to find this folder, Custom Nodes. Double click that. We're going to highlight the whole area here. Type CMD. A command window will launch, and then click Control V to paste what we copied. Basically, it's Git clone plus the URL address of the Comfy UI manager. Simply hit Enter. And that's all you have to do. It's going to install the Comfy UI manager. And this goes for Comfy UI in general. It's not just for Swarm. If you're just using Comfy UI, it works the same way. I'm going to restart Swarm. Whenever you get this yellow bar, it just means things are loading in the background. Just wait a minute or two. And then we're going to head back to Comfy UI workflow. So you see, we keep getting this error here. Let's close that off. But now we can go into the manager and select install missing custom nodes. Now, this is very helpful for workflows that you want to do, and you're going to see this in other videos I show you. This is the easiest way to install those missing nodes. This is the missing node that we have. We're going to go ahead and click install. And then once again, you got to shut down and restart. We've restarted Swarm UI. We go back to the Comfy workflow. Now we're not getting that error. If I were to generate an image, we see the greens. I did have to reload the reference image for the control net. We see that we can create within Comfy UI here. Now we can also do this in reverse. I'm going to bring in an old workflow I used to use quite a bit for SDX styles. I'm simply just going to drag it in and you see my workflow here. We can load our base model here. You input the positive and negative prompt in here, but here we have where we can pick styles. So we have comic book, analog film, photographic, so on and so forth, right? We've got our SDXL 
text encoders, latent image, case sampler, save image, and I think the VAE is hidden. Yep, it's hidden at the back. Now what we can do here is save it as one of the workflows that we want to use. But first I'm going to click on use this workflow in generate tab. And you're going to notice the interface is now going to change. If you look at the bottom here, you see that the custom comfy workflow is enabled. You'll now see this SDXL prompt styler here, and we can change the style here if we wanted to. And you'll notice that it adopts the positive and negative prompt boxes in here. So here I've got Jimi Hendrix playing guitar at <laughs> a concert, and the style is psychedelic. We could change the model to, let's try Realism Engine. And there you go, definitely has that artistic style. This is very cool where it's like swarmy wise, kind of like your own little interface that you can create your layout, how you configure it based on your specific workflows. Now at this point, what we can do is go back into Comfy UI workflow here, click on save workflow, and I'm just gonna put SDXL styles. We're gonna select enable in simple tab. I'll show you where that is in a second. We'll click on save workflow. And now you see if we toggle between our workflows here, we can go between them and our UI is gonna change as well. If we go back to the generate section, you'll see this area here. Let me zoom in a bit. We click on that. That's like a shortcut toggle for all our Comfy UI workflows. So we can go between these and select them. But if you click on the icon here, it says that you don't necessarily need to use this directly. It's kind of just there. So as I said, I know that was more of an intermediate to advanced video. If you're a beginner, let me know in the comments below what you want to learn specifically whether it's basics of control net or even comfy UI and how you could utilize swarm. I'm always open to doing videos based on your comments. I don't always do it for views, but views are nice as well. Now, if you're looking to use SD3 medium with swarm, I did a video on it just the other day. Make sure to check it out in that video right there. Until next video, I'll see you when I see you.